if we don't break that at some point in our lives, we're not going to be able to carry the responsibility that life requires. Yes. So how do we break that? We break that through an initiation. And what are the principles of initiation? Well, you have to have what is called a communitas, a group of people on the same mission, right? With the same intentions, trying to become the best they can be. He's pushing men to become the best versions of themselves. And this is what actually society needs. We need more masculine men. He wants you as a man to become more responsible, to have a champion mindset instead of a fucking victim mindset that is putting you into the fucking ground. So I actually watched Andrew Tate video, top 10 lessons from Andrew Tate, because I never watched him and paid attention. I was freaking impressed, bro. Specifically, well, everything he's talking about discipline, right? You have to have willpower. You have to be disciplined. And it's not about your emotions. You have to be tough-minded. Problems happen to everyone, rich people and poor people. You just have to accept that as part of life. But what really impressed me as a new idea or a new angle is he talks about ego. He says, you got to have a big ego. But here's the kicker, though. Mm -hmm. He's responsible for his ego which it sounds like a dichotomy. So people have a big ego, so they feel entitled without doing the work. But he has a big ego, so he is obligated to do the work. He's obligated to work hard because he has a big ego. So he's not entitled in an arrogant way. He's entitled and he puts himself to work to fulfill that entitlement, which is an amazing concept to me because when I have a big ego and then it's not fulfilled by the outside world, then I feel like a victim. And I have this fairy tale mindset that, you know, I should have this or life should be nice. Life should be good. You know, I try to reconcile. Even yesterday, I asked you, how do you reconcile the idea of God and being in the present moment and then being the warrior, going to work, lifting weights, being disciplined and delayed gratification, denying yourself pleasure. So that's just a whole new angle to me. It's actually instead of you do it by denying your ego, you do it because of your ego. So, for example, Evan Carmichael, his book is called Built to Serve, and he believes that we are all built to serve one another and earn money from that service. So you diminish your ego and you're all about service. Mm -hmm. But how about you integrate your ego in a sophisticated way where you're now serving the people because of your ego, because you said you were going to serve the people. You said you were going to be successful. You said you were going to be the best version that you can be. And he said, I don't want to be a liar. So if I said I'm going to be the best, I'm obligated to fulfill that because I don't want to you be a liar. You have to show up for yourself. Right. Mm -hmm. He says, I love myself too much, but he does the work to prove that he loves himself too much. You will so go I, work out, you show up at the gym for yourself. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So I think that's incredible. I used to think when I see snippets, five second video of Andrew Tate last year, I didn't resonate with him, but I listened to him today. And a whole mindset shift. I was like, legit, actually. At least in the video that I watched. Hmm. I watched one 13-minute video. It had 10 yeah. lessons from Andrew Tate. And they were all about discipline, responsibility, hmm. be tough-minded because life is hard. And you have to have the willpower. You have to want it bad enough. And it's not like you mentioned an unscripted from the book. You don't follow your passion. You actually pursue the value. And then whatever the process is, you're going to put up with the process. And then you're going to get the reward when the value shows. He no fakery. This, no fakery. He pretty much says the same thing. He said, you, you want to have it bad enough and you want to be passionate about money. So if you're digging holes, if you're digging trenches and it's for the money, you're going to be passionate about it because it's for the money. He says it in a smart way. He's like, whatever you do, you're not going to like it. And that's why you get paid for it because people don't like doing it. Yeah, he's so, very competitive. And competition is very healthy. Like competition is not a bad thing. They teach in school nowadays that competition is aggressive and we don't keep score because everyone is a winner and all of that crap, right? That's terrible to the kids. And it's so unrealistic because life is very competitive, very competitive, especially for us men. You're competing every day with other men in a good way, and it doesn't have to be bad. So this is how you challenge yourself. This is how you get inspired by competition. You don't envy competition. You're, you get inspired by competition so you can do better and become better. 
what I really, really admire about him is that he takes not giving a fuck about what other people think to a whole new level. He does what he believes is right, regardless of what others think of him, you know? And he understands that he broke the code and he really did break the code. Super red-pilled and unscripted, all of that. Like you can label it however, like there's so many labels to it out of the matrix. So yeah, but he always refers to it as the matrix. This is why he's so hated because people are stuck in the matrix and they don't know, they cannot see what he's seeing. They cannot know what he knows. His intention, he's pushing men to become the best versions of themselves. And this is what actually society needs. We need more masculine men in a healthy way. People nowadays see masculine men as toxic. They call it toxic masculinity or whatever. Well, of course, there there is toxic masculinity, but this is not what I see him teach. He wants you as a man to become more responsible, to have a champion mindset instead of a fucking victim mindset that is putting you into the fucking ground, you know, like, and you have to use the word fuck a lot when you're talking about (laughs) Andrew. He teaches discipline. He teaches how to become a warrior, to show up to yourself, like you said to protect, to provide, to be a role model to your kids. So this cannot be bad. This is what actually we need right now. And this is what women are attracted to. They would never admit it, but this is what women are attracted to. It's so biological. It's one of the laws of the universe, the law of polarity. Opposites attract. There's north and south. There's hot and cold, positive, negative. Masculine, feminine, in everything. So if you're feminine, you'll be attracted to masculine. If you're masculine, you're attracted to the feminine. And this is what masculinity is about. Take charge, be responsible, become a leader. I think many of us have been traumatized from what masculinity is or we're triggered by masculinity, leadership, authority, because Mm -hmm. we've experienced so much of it in a toxic way or in a perverted way. You and I went through a masculine initiation. And we studied king, warrior, magician, lover, the archetypes Mm -hmm. of a person. Mm -hmm. And the king has two shadows, the tyrant and the weakling. And the warrior has two shadows, the bully and the coward. Mm -hmm. And then the magician has the dummy and the manipulator. And the lover has the addict and the fuckboy. So masculinity and authority and leadership, when there's too many shadow qualities then it's toxic. So when a person experienced it that way in their childhood, from teachers, from their parent, then they grow up not liking masculinity, not liking authority, not liking leadership. But what we went through the initiation is to learn what are these shadows so we not have them and recognize that we have these qualities. This way we can be the archetype of the king in its fullness without the shadows as much as we can. We can be the archetype of the warrior in its fullness without the shadows. Instead of becoming a workaholic, no, actually become a disciplined, responsible person. And the magician and the lover, instead of being the addict that just dives in pleasure and never comes back out, no, actually learn how to be a lover in his fullness, how to be a member of a community, be balanced, be grounded. King, warrior, magician, lover. And if people have never been introduced to the king, warrior, magician, lover, it's derived from the work of psychoanalyst Carl Jung. And it was carried on by psychoanalyst Robert Moore. And his idea is when God came to earth, when pure love and energy came down to earth, it stepped down into four quadrants, four archetypes. And these archetypes, he called them king, warrior, magician, lover. King is the part of us that is about the big picture and is the generous and generative and high values. And the warrior part of us, the part of us that gets it done, the aggressive part of us, the part of us that focuses and has less emotions and is more technical and precise and is about repetition. The magician is the part of us that deals with reality, the animalistic part of us, like what is required. And then the lover part of us is the community, is the connection, it's the art, it's the poetry, it's the enjoyment of life. So each of those has shadows and each of those can be in its fullness. And that's how we become more full people, more balanced, more integrated when we integrate these four parts in their fullness. 
I want to also talk about the reasons why men become soft and go against their grain of their design. So either it's the absence of a masculine figure, like if the child was raised only by their mother and they never got to spend a lot of time with their father, right? So when that happens, the child is used to react to every emotion that he feels which could be very dangerous when they grow up. And this is how you get school shooters. So one person gets mad, they go buy a gun and they fucking shoot everyone, right? Because they are very reactive to what they feel. They're out of control of their emotions. So this is like an extreme example, right? But even the, if we don't take it to the extremes, it's still you react to everything you feel. You feel like eating constantly. You have a very high appetite. So you're very responsive to it. You eat uncontrollably. You become fucking obese that way. You snack all the time. You watch TV uncontrollably, whatever, right? It can lead to very bad habits. So everything will lead back to discipline, which is the warrior energy. You just neglect all of these impulsive emotions and you do what is right, what your body needs. So the warrior energy is the part that gets it done and is detached from emotions. Mm -hmm. So what about the emotions? What do we do about them? And I was thinking about this before the call. I thought of the idea of righteousness. And righteousness to me is doing the right thing, which is integrating the whole picture in perspective. Mm -hmm. So not completely ignoring the emotions, but rather thinking of what's the best thing to do in a bigger scale. That can be a little bit of kindness and a little bit of getting it done. Sometimes it can be just getting it done. Sometimes it's actually, no, no, no. This is about kindness right now. This is about lover energy right now. And I think that righteousness comes from the king energy. So the king energy is the part that has the big picture. It's the part that judges what needs to happen. And it's the part that integrates the king, the warrior, and the magician, and the lover. So there's holistic sense of being, right? You were talking yesterday about being a lot. King is about being. Because you ignore your emotions, it's going to come back and bite you in the butt somehow. Like you suppress something, what you resist persists. It's going to keep coming up in perverted ways, in ways you don't expect. At the same way, if you just drown in the ocean of emotions, then you're literally drowning in the ocean of emotions. Mm -hmm. How can you balance that out? How can you integrate all of them? I think it's with the king qualities in you, the big picture qualities in you, the righteousness, the values in you. The solution for men not being soft is initiation. And initiation can happen in positive ways and it can happen in negative ways, like joining gangs. That's a negative form of initiation. So actually my first experience of initiation, I was about 12 years old, okay? Mm. and somebody was bothering me in school and I didn't know what to do. I didn't know if I should be peaceful or if I should fight. And my uncle was around at the time. He was visiting us and I asked him, hey, like I was religious at the time and I was learning about religion in school a lot. So I wanted to be a person that is on the right path. So I asked my uncle, as a person that is on the right path, does he fight back or does he pray for forgiveness or whatever? And he said, no, fight back, you know, hit and get hit. So what? Be courageous. So to me, that was a moment of initiation. I was introduced to something new. I was introduced to courage and honor and dignity and competition and humility. Because if I fight, I might lose. I might get humiliated, right? I have to be humble to get into a fight yeah. and risk being humiliated. So that was a moment of initiation to me. And then skip, forward, uh, skip forward, I'm 29 years old. And then I meet... Elliot, one of my mentors, and he encouraged us to read King, Warrior, Magician, Lover. And then I learned deeper about initiation. So, for example, if you join the sport in your time, that's a form of initiation. Like when I was doing Taekwondo, I had to show up on time. There were rituals, right? Before I step on the mat, I'd have to bow. Before competitions, we would have to make sure that we cut our nails and we look proper and clean. And our master, we have to bow after every class and go shake his hand a certain way. Say, thank you, sir. Like these rituals, they reform the warrior energy within us, mm -hmm. the discipline energy in us. Initiation it's again. like the army in Elliot. Egypt. Right. So in Egypt, it's mandatory to go to the army. And usually like a local saying, when somebody is off the path, 
when somebody is doing whatever they want in life and they're not responsible and they're going downhill, people say, if he goes to the army, he'll get straightened out. Right. Because it's a form of initiation. It's a powerful form of initiation. So every man in Egypt needs to go to the army unless, you know, they don't have a brother or they're the only caretaker for their mother and sisters. So initiation has been in cultures since the beginning of time because it's so important for society. It's so important for society to have this protector energy, the disciplined energy. And in our modern day, the warrior energy is the one that has projects, the one that works hard, whether they're an employee, whether they are business owners, they're the one that get it done to support the society, to serve the community. They're the protectors. They are the builders. So initiation is so important. And then a perverted way of initiation is if you hook up with a bunch of friends that are all about drugs and alcohol, that that's a form of a perverted initiation because that is an initiation. You're being initiated to a new world than the one you grew up in. Most of us grew up in a world where it's about comfort and nurture. Yeah. Let's say from the age of zero to seven or the age of zero to 12. Very At close some... to the mom. Exactly. Very close to the At... mother. Yes. If we don't break that at some point in our lives, we're not going to be able to carry the responsibility that life requires. Yes. So how do we break that? We break that through an initiation. And what mm -hmm. are the principles of initiation? Well, you have to have what is called a communitas, a group of people on the same mission, right? With the same intentions, trying to become the best they can be. You can be initiated with a group of people that are trying to be the worst they can be. That's an initiation, but it's not resourceful. So that's why like initiation, when it's with a group of people, you can be initiated on your own. But if you do it with people, this bond is like a spiritual bond, like it goes into your soul. So the initiation really soaks into you. Yeah. It becomes part of you, becomes easier. It becomes integrated. Yeah. It feels traumatic at the time of it, but it's just so uncomfortable because you're exposed to a whole new world and if you remember in the revolution 2011 in egypt egyptian men they're so courageous that they they used to pick up the fucking gas bombs by their hands and they throw it back at the police it takes a lot of balls to do that they're not intimidated by death at all you can get shot they don't give a fuck and they're just like standing up for what is right and for their rights, for the country's rights. So I think that's a very good example as well. And women too, like they weren't just men in the revolution, the streets, mostly men, but women were there too. Time when all the people were coming together and they were protecting each other, like no harassment whatsoever. Men were being men by not harassing the women because sexual harassment, that's a boy behavior someone who's not in control of their emotions and being reactive to their impulsive emotions you know the horniness same thing for porn addiction and social media addiction any kind of addiction really so yeah man it's important i love that so you mentioned a few things that resonated with me kind of like what i was alluding to as well you mentioned people came together so that's community so yeah. in an initiation a brotherhood is formed a sisterhood is formed. Yes. And that just makes people so much more powerful. Mm -hmm. And then it's formed over a unified cause. We're here for one mission. We're here for one value we're trying to reach. There's no going back. Like mountains will move. I'll pick up the Molotov and throw it back at the enemy. Doesn't matter. I'm not afraid of death. Like that's the level of intensity, the emotional intensity and the intensity of the purpose. And then you mentioned the boy act. And I feel that is just, it doesn't have the king energy. It doesn't have the big picture energy. Yeah. We all have, you know, whatever goes through our mind, but it's mitigated by the big picture, the bigger right. purpose. So yeah. the warrior has a small purpose of getting tasks done, but the king quality has a bigger purpose. Mm -hmm. that all these tasks come together right it's like uh, prioritizing stuff because of this big picture you're not being reactive to these impulsive feelings that you get from time to time amazing prioritizing so the king prioritizes yeah. and i want to mention yeah i want to mention a metaphor that my uncle used with me to describe my job one time 
And it's basically, so the king energy, he's the director of the movie. So he takes all the scenes, the little scenes that have been made by the warrior, by the magician, by the lover, and then he puts them together to make a beautiful movie. So each has a purpose. The magician has a purpose, the lover has a purpose, and the warrior has a purpose. And our intention as individuals is to have the warrior does the best job and the magician to do the best job and the lover to do the best job. And then the king does his best job by trying to put it together in a cohesive way. Beautiful. No preparation, man. We don't need to fucking prepare Bro, for this kind of stuff. This is in our soul, brother. Yeah. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> oh, we're fucking idiots. <laughs> <laughs>